Good morning and welcome to the April Downtown Aviation Economy and Innovation Subcommittee. My name is Daniel Valenzuela, City Council Member for District 5, and I'm honored to chair this particular subcommittee and uh, to be here with my colleagues to my, to my right, our Vice Mayor, Thelda Williams, and to my left, Councilman Michael Nowakowski, and uh, Councilwoman Laura Pastor is on this particular subcommittee uh, she just got back in from China, and uh, she she may or may not be here for this meeting. So we do have a quorum. We'll go ahead and, and get this meeting started. We start this particular subcommittee, and we end it with a call to the public. Uh, it's it's more than just, you know, it's just a reminder, more than a reminder, that the public has a first and last word here. And uh, if you are interested in speaking up on any, any particular item, you can always fill out a, a yellow card for those items as well. So we don't have uh, anything for the first call to the public. The first item will go to, or the next item will go to, uh, would be uh, request a motion for the, for the minutes of the March 13th meeting. So moved. We have a second. motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passes. The next is our consent agenda, which are items two through eight. However, I believe yes. staff has a. Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the subcommittee, if we could hold out item two or ask staff to just provide a quick update on the recommendation from the CTC on item two. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. So we'll, we'll take the we'll take Mario's information for item two, and then we'll just go. We'll, uh, we'll take a motion for the consent, unless my colleagues want to separate anything else out. Mario, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the subcommittee. Uh, <laughs> just uh, wanted to provide a quick update to you on the action taken by the Citizens Transportation Commission on item two, which is the authorization to issue a request for proposal for the lease and redevelopment of the city-owned parcel at 300 North Central Avenue, which uh, is our central station transit center. Uh, when your packet went out, um, it was before the, uh, the meeting actually occurred. So this is to update you on, the, on their action, which took place last Thursday. The, the commission did approve the item uh, uh, with a unanimous vote. And I wanted to also clarify um, some language that was in uh, the, the pre presented as the criteria, the evaluation criteria which is to continue all existing transit functionality and routes um, and create a dense infill redevelopment project and capitalize on the unique transit-centric characteristics of the site. It's really important to the commission that the transit uh, use and functionality of that site be the priority and the development um, be the secondary uh, um, purpose in this, uh, in this RFP. So that's, uh, that's what we wanted to communicate. That will also uh, be communicated in the report that goes to the full council. Okay. Did you want to take that separately? We'll um, do it all together. Yeah, it's, I mean, unless well, we could still keep it as a consent if you would prefer. We could do a consent two through eight, noting two as amended by the CTC. All right. I'll make that motion. Okay. That's our motion by the vice mayor. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. We do have one card on two. Uh, Mark Neutral, Monique Artis. You, are you good? Are you sure? Okay. Thank you for being here. Uh, and that is the only one we have. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. This is for the consent agenda with the uh, with the update on item two. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. We're going to item nine, which is uh, the unsolicited. Yes, the unsolicited proposal. And um, Mr. Chair, I find it's very exciting. I was very surprised. Uh, how quick a response was. In fact, I, I think it's needed to have more examination because I'm very concerned uh, moving forward with this uh, before we really have a full discussion on the downtown traffic patterns. Uh, 
the self convention hall. There's been so much conversation about what what goes on there, what should go on there, and do we still need it? How that space should be used if we don't. And then I think we also have uh, the ongoing um, talks about the arena. Uh, what's its future? What's its traffic patterns? Uh, I'm very uneasy about moving forward with this until we have a full understanding of downtown. And right now we have several plans, uh, all done by Citizens Committee, um, in good faith, and at the time, were good plans. However, when you superimpose them on each other, uh, we won't have any traffic downtown. And that concerns me if you ever want to leave the arena or go to a dinner down there, or et cetera. So I think it's untimely for us to do this. And I'd like to make the motion to withdraw this item well, until we get a better understanding of how the city needs to utilize its existing assets and implement the different multiple transportation slash streets policies. Mr. Chair, before I second that, I'd like to ha put on the record um, a comment from Nick Woods. Oh, no, we do have we do have cards, but before I get to the cards, the motion on the table is to withdraw this item. Um, and withdraw this item for, for now. For now. It could come back in the because future once we know what we're doing. <laughs> and I, I, will, I will support the motion, but I want to make it very clear that I personally would want this item to come back uh, sooner rather than later. This is about bringing the, the next version of downtown Phoenix in and an opportunity for us to lead with the arts, as I've been saying for quite some time. And, uh, and it's important to make sure that our stakeholders are, are communicating and, and working together uh, with, with the shared vision to move our city and specifically downtown forward. So, uh, so that said, we, we do have uh, several cards on this item. And um, I, will, I will read each one and you can decide whether you'd like to speak on the motion that is on the table uh, or, or not. So the first one is Nick Wood. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, my name is Nick Wood. I'm with the law firm of Snell and Wilmer. My address is 1 Arizona Center, and I represent Hines. Um, as you know, I represented Hines with respect to the Collier Center recently, and that's moving forward. And last Thursday, they called me to, to, to engage me to help them with this one as well. So I spent a weekend, you know, catching up on everything and meeting with the client and getting a good understanding of, of what, what they're proposing, where they've been, and, and how to proceed. Um, I, I guess just a couple of thoughts, because I understand, you know, the, the question, the concern. I think it's a legitimate one. And, and I think I may have a, a, a suggestion. You know, what's happened in the past, I mean, really under the stewardship of this committee, downtown has is, is really transformed itself from a place where people had to be to a place where people want to be. And now the next step is really going to be more evolutionary. You know, with all the projects I've worked on in downtown, you know, each one of them was separate and apart from the others. It was almost like an island. You know, we worked very much on the streetscapes and we worked with all of the downtown stakeholders with the project, the design of the project, and all the things that went on in the street. But there's a disconnect. And the disconnect is there's a lack of connection, right? I mean, a consistent connection. The idea that Heinz has brought is, is really revolutionary, and that is create a master developer who will come in and you know, have a, an area that's established, especially along a street, and to make that street more than just a place where you know, pedestrians will go from point A to point B, a place where they can actually spend some time, outdoor dining, all of these other things. And there's a couple of different ways to do that. One is you can do what my other client, Jonathan Vento, has done up in row two at, at Third Street in Roosevelt. You buy up all the land along, around the city's parcel, and then you respond to an RFP for the city's parcel, and then you do it that way. Well, along Third Street, between the Sheraton and, and the arena, that's not possible. You know, you've got the convention center, you know, you have um, uh, the Herberger, uh, Symphony Hall, and, of course, the south part of the convention center as well. What's different about this RFP is this is really the first one that's responding to the city council's approval of an unsolicited proposal. 
And typically what happens is the city and, you know, and Christine Mackey and, and her team are great at this. Before there's an RFP, they reach out and they visit with all the stakeholders and they, they, they ask for their input. They solicit their comments, their suggestions, their visions, right? No matter if it's, if, if it's the local homeowners associations, whoever it happens to be, you know, downtown voices, they go out to them and say, tell us what you'd like to see on this particular property. Then of course, the, you know, the council will direct them to issue the RFP, the RFP goes through the process. Of course, it's long and arduous, but um, we, we get there. You know, we got there on the Barrister Building, you know, we got there on, on the Knipe House and all the other ones as well. Here it's different because there's not that opportunity to go out and speak to the neighbors and also to you know, answer your question, uh, Councilman Williams, about you know, how does this work with all of the other plans that are in downtown? So rather than have it withdrawn uh, with, with your permission, I would suggest maybe we continue this until next month's hearing for 30 days. And the reason I'm making that suggestion is we will do, we will go out and meet with the stakeholders and do what's typically done before an RFP is submitted. And we will you know, invite their participation, their in input, and really <coughs> learn to understand what they would like to see you know, at this point. And at the same time, you know, working with staff to, you know, understand and answer your questions. But I would rather, again, with your permission, not have it just be withdrawn and, and sit in limbo um, because time is money, especially today. You know, material costs, uh, labor costs, interest rates, they're all going up. And what's happening with tariff wars right now affects building and development. So. If it's okay, I would like to ask for just a 30-day continuance, and then we'll have a lot more information to come back to you with next month. Mr. Chair, I don't know if I can legally respond to him, so maybe I can explain to you. <laughs> My concern with that request is the fact that uh, for us to look at all we need to include in this downtown package means we also have to bring some of these citizens' groups back together combine them because we have set policies based on their recommendations that really conflict with one another. And when you add in uh, light rail on top of that because that wasn't considered in part of their recommendations, and due to the circumstances surrounding the city, uh, no offense dear, but I don't want to put a time limit because I think it we might not be able to hold to it. And I would prefer to make it as soon as possible, but if I set a definite time, there's too much in play right now to make it all happen in a correct way that would ultimately benefit anyone who would be applying or introducing a plan of this type. It is a huge amount of money. I don't want them to waste time. Uh, and efforts, uh, knowing that this is going on on the policy level and staff can't respond to some of the things that you're going to be asking, needing, or wanting. And uh, I just think we're better to leave it open-ended until we could revisit this later. Uh, I'm hoping all this can be accomplished this summer, um, but I can't guarantee that. So I don't want to mess uh, with the proposer. I hope that explains my that, position. No, no, I, I understand. I, well, it came through this subcommittee, in fact, and how we created this unsolicited RFP opportunity. Uh, the, the proposer is playing within the boundaries that have been set. So there's an unsolicited RFP. Proposer is, is, uh, is, is, is putting their information out there. And so I, I do see the concern of of waiting, so I, what would make me feel a little bit better about this is understanding from city staff how, you know, what what, what happens next? How, how can we continue this momentum moving forward so that it's not it's not a plan that just gets shelved because we we have a, a, a real opportunity here to move our down downtowns evolve or they die. They don't stay the same, and so that was the purpose of of creating this type of a process. So, uh, so if we pull this item uh, today, what, what does that leave us? 
Watch Chairman, this. members of the subcommittee, um, where this would leave us is the item would still remain confidential. It would still be part of our process moving forward. We could kind of put together, um, hearing uh, Councilwoman Williams today, what her thoughts are, we could put together a timeline how this would work and move forward, come back and brief you, and then we'd have a better understanding of what time we'd be looking at. But it would remain confidential. It would remain uh, with the city as an active project moving forward. Okay. But that would give us the time to sit down and uh, work with Convention Center, work with our streets department, work and really understand um, how we can best answer the questions being asked. Our stakeholders uh, here at downtown, everyone, okay. That's correct. Right. I am. Chris and I had this discussion on setting a timeline, and we fully understand that as this review takes place, and hopefully uh, it is included with all the different policy decisions that have been made. Um, the concepts. I don't know. Quite say this without saying it. Uh, that are potentially uh, available or could be considered could be reviewed as this review happens by the citizens and staff. Is that correct? Chairman, Councilman Williams, that's correct. So concurrent to staff putting together the schedule, bringing the information that we would be able to say this is how long it'll take on the convention center, on the street study, the, um, the conceptual proposer could be out meeting with the community. We could be doing our work uh, concurrent that we are allowed to do from the procurement side since we have this process here. As was said at the beginning, this is a little bit different than the RFP where we typically go out with a, a very canned project with an exact site. We know exactly what's gonna be built. We go out and, and gain community input. In this instance, it's a concept to activate an area. Right. And at the end of the day, what we come back with may be very, very different than what the, and probably will be very different than what the concept to activate looks like today. So to your point, that would give the time, it, it, things could be running concurrent with the work that we're doing, and it would give us that opportunity um, to do some more due diligence. You know, when we pass this, uh, it's very exciting to have this happen. I just never anticipated such a quick response. Uh, that's what's kind of throwing us. We thought we had at least four to six months and work through everything that goes on here, as well as addressing what I'm hearing businesses say is becoming problematic. And so I'm confident that we can do this. So thank you. You know, I agree with um, Council Member Williams. Back in 2008, we looked at activating First Street, Second Street, and Third Street. And the economy just turned, so we weren't able to activate either one of those streets. But what we did as the city of Phoenix is that we actually improved 1st Street and 2nd Street, holding that 3rd Street as a pedestrian type of mall like we have in Denver and other great cities and making it more of a destination point. I think it's a great idea. I, I, I would approve it today if it was just activating 3rd Street and talking about the... Um, Herberger Theater um, property. But my concern out of all of it is the South Building. I mean, we're generating $2 million from that. And the other thing is that's where most of our, um, our local activities happen, you know, from local fundraisers, from nonprofits. That's where they have their, their dinners, their dances, and all that. That's where we have the RV shows. All the local stuff that happens is mostly done in that South convention side of the um, of, of our convention center. The other thing too is that I like, and I asked John for this information, so we're giving him some more time to work it, but not having the South Convention Center, what type of conventions can we actually attract and what conventions won't come because we lost that square footage, right? Um, I was all for moving the, um, the arena onto that campus or onto that South um, convention center because that would actually enhance our convention business where we can actually hold um, a, a Republican or a Democratic convention that asks for a place to sit anywhere from 18 to 20,000 people. Um, things like that I, I'm open to. I don't see that in this plan right here. 
I see more hotels, which we need downtown. I see more apartments and more retail. That's great in business space. But I really think that this is the last piece of property that really the city of Phoenix owns, a whole city block. And we need to make sure that we're good stewards of whatever we're going to do in the future. We need to make sure that if we're going to try to um, attract some of those big conventions, that we have the space to attract them. The other thing is that we lost block 23. So, you know, we used to use that block as a block to have the outside events and all that. Um, that's gone, and it's a beautiful grocery store and, and a project going in there. So now would we be able to house it indoors somehow, some way, to continue to attract the Super Bowls and the big events like that in downtown Phoenix? So all those questions have to be answered before I can actually vote on this. The Third Street activation, I've been pushing that from 2008. That's actually my district. We've had many groups. But when we talk about stakeholders, it's not just the individuals that live in downtown. We're talking about all the nonprofits, all the people that use that South um, um, Convention site. And I'd like to make sure that we ha they have some type of input also. And if there's a plan, where are we going to put all those uh, smaller events? And would that interfere with our, our conventions that we have now? So I want to make sure we have all that data, all that information before we make a big decision like this. Okay. We do have a few more cards. The motion on the table is to is to pull this item for now. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is a second on the motion. So uh, for if you'd like to speak on the motion on the table, you can you can let me know. Steve Moore. Good. Bramley Pollen. So just for legal purposes, again, this is to speak on the motion that is on the table. Uh, good morning. Uh, I am surprised to hear the motion to withdraw. I question whether the city has the right to withdraw this uh, proposal. Uh, the city creates an unsolicited development proposal. The applicant submits it following the proposal. Uh, there is a process, and yet the city just wants to shut it down. Uh, while there's discussion that it would br bring it back, a withdrawal ends it. Um, I was originally here to uh, speak about a request to continue the item. Uh, the agenda and the staff report are incomplete. While they describe multiple uh, possible uses for the South Convention uh, Center property, the agenda and the staff report failed to describe the primary and intended use of the property as a new arena. I requested information from, uh, on this proposal and was denied by staff. As the unsolicited development proposal policy has a confidentiality clause in the early stages of the submittal, this confidential component flies in the face of the city consistently describing itself as being open and transparent, not to mention that it violates state law. The city does not have the right to decide to whom and when the information the city receives is withheld from the public. The state statutes are very clear. In addition, the proposal developer Hines went to the newspaper the other day and described a large portion of this proposal. If the confidential clause is in fact legal and the city has the right to withhold information, when the proposal went to the newspaper, the proposal is no longer confidential, and therefore this information must be released immediately. But, I but what is most troubling of all, and I'm reading from the staff report, staff presented a general overview of the unsolicited development proposal at a special community meeting on March 28, 2018, to which community, downtown community stakeholders were invited. So that means that the city has violated its own confidentiality policy. The city has discussed the proposal with a few hand-selected members of the public at a private meeting, yet refuses to provide the same information to the general public. That's troubling, and most importantly, it's illegal. 
I would like to understand under what ordinance or law the city believes that a publicly financed arena can be renovated or built new and skirt the need for a public vote. I would also like to understand under what policy and to what degree can an existing facility be deconstructed and yet be considered a renovation? And finally, when does the use of a facility change use? For example, the South Convention Center building is used primarily for ex exhibition purposes, but the floor and concourse of an arena can easily be used for exhibition. I would like staff to respond to these questions and then allow me to continue with my remaining time. Unfortunately, sir, the time is, is up, but I can ask staff to get, uh, to get with Mr. Paulin on, on these items, correct? Sir? Is he giving us a copy? Of yeah, can we have a, can we, do you have a copy of that that I can get over to staff? If not, we can run a copy for you. Submit this for the record. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we can do that. Thank you, Mr. Paulin. Brent Kleinman. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I, um, I believe I'm along the same lines as the representatives for Hines as well as some of the other people. I really don't want to see this withdrawn, but possibly continued, if not 30 days, 60 days. But this, this is something that based on the process that was presented by city council needs to move forward i question wonder how this was submitted seven days after you all passed this i have a feeling they didn't just come up with the idea once city council said yes we're going to do with this and my other concern with the cause for the extension on this or the postponement versus withdrawal is is this becoming too large of an unsolicited development bid that nobody else can compete with Heinz. And it, does the city and the staff need to look and say, is there a way to portion this out somewhat so we can have some competition in competing bids on this process and in, in still making it monetarily feasible for the original bidder? But What's neat about downtown Phoenix right now, and still there's good chunks that are individually owned small businesses, local businesses. You take this large space, it's another space that's going corporate and going away from the heart of what Phoenix, I believe, still is and what's good about downtown Phoenix. I mean, the north half of downtown Phoenix has stayed very well, small local businesses, and you guys have done a great job doing that. You t change Third Street along with the lot 23, which is gonna be the fries, everything else, it's gonna be turned into a corporate mega center. And I'm not sure that's in the best interest long-term for downtown Phoenix. So I, I believe in a continuance of 30 or 60 days is needed, but I also think that the city and staff needs to look and say, is there a way to split this? Either the Herberger area, the South Convention Center area or different things instead of one solicited bid. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kleiman. You know, I'd like to ask a question for Nick. What do you think about that? I mean, would that be okay with your client or? Uh, I'm sorry? What would you think about those ideas that he was suggesting to us? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Councilman Nowakowski, um, if we split it up into pieces, you certainly have the ability to do that. I mean, it's within your discretion to do so. But what happens when you do that is it takes away the ability of the master developer to do all of the things in between. You know, what's great about this proposal, uh, or I should say this policy of, of this master developer, it, you're now using master developer money to do all of these public improvements into the street between Van Buren and all the way down to Jefferson. Uh, if you split it up, you don't, you don't have that source. Um, and, and also I think, with respect to some of these questions, if I may, Mr. Chairman, um, these are all great questions and, and you, you should have answers. My understanding of the process is that we have initiated through the um, unsolicited proposal, our proposal to be the master developer. 
But then that triggers a number of things. Number one, as I said, we'll go out and visit with all the stakeholders and get their input, as, as will staff. Um, in addition, then we start, we take that information and over the next 90 days, we start putting together our final proposal. And then we submit that to the city. During that time frame, many of the answers that you're asking, which again are great questions, but the answers to those questions will unfold during that time frame. Then once everyone's proposals are in, assuming that there are others besides Heinz, then it will come back to you and you'll be able to take a look at that and, and digest all of that information and then say, you know what, this makes sense or it doesn't make sense and you can reject it or you can you know, make recommendations to the council. But so that's why I was asking for this 30 day continuance. We can do the outreach within the next 30 days, come back, and then during that ensuing 90 day periods, if you would recommend that council does move forward, then all those questions will be answered. But that way we're not stalling the process, but we're also not, not um, extending it so far that it may die its own death. So that's why I was, I was requesting the 30 day continuance. We can still do all the, all the answers within the ensuing 90 days, but this way it keeps us kind of all in, in lockstep and, and on time. So, thank you. I, I, I just, yeah, thank you. I, I'm concerned about you going out and meeting with everybody when the internal meetings and the review of the policies that are overlapping could change the dynamics that you're out meeting with people. and, and that. Those patterns could change significantly. And I'm not sure that, uh, I, I know we don't usually argue about something, but I, I love the project as proposed, uh, I, the concepts. It's much more complicated than that. And I just would like for once to have a clear plan for downtown because we, implement everything that's on the books right now and we eliminate vehicles and if you think the people up north or down south don't want to drive their car to downtown you're wrong we've got to have vehicular access and mobility and uh, the police have to be involved on on how to disperse traffic in case there's an emergency or something tra tragic would happen down here and none of that's in place and i'm concerned although you have this idealistic, I, I mean, I can see it, it's just dramatic, uh, but the impact would be significant. And I don't know if that will be compatible with what's down there. I think it's workable in the future. I want to see, I don't want to see this die forever, but if I were to say it has to be continued in blah months, I'm not sure we have our act together enough within the time frame to accommodate the plan. You see what I'm saying? I, I'm probably confusing everyone by saying that. I just, I don't want to give false expectations on either side of what needs to occur and I'm sure will occur, but none of it's set in motion yet. And I, I want the downtown to continue to, to blossom. I think we have gone beyond our expectations downtown. But I think for a great city, it has to be well planned. And right now, uh, we're not there on the planning side to accommodate what's being proposed and what's rising out of the ground right now. And, and I know Councilman Nowakowski has these concerns. I learned about the convention center. I'm not sure we want to be without it. And what does that do? I'm sorry. It really has a serious impact on the current operation. So that has to be reviewed. But if I say continued until such and such a date, I think um, it is not good for either side. And I don't want them to disappear. Please express that to them. Uh, I just would like to see them come back later sometime in the fall maybe, but I don't want to set a date. So I hope that's an explanation from where I'm coming from. All right, I want to continue with the, with the cards. We have two more. I believe this is uh, Eric Bear. Yeah, there he is. Is that, is that correct? That is correct. 
Awesome. Dr. Bear. How are you? I'm just going off of your handwriting. You're not a doctor, are you? <laughs> How are you? Uh, Bramley Pollen has pretty much uh, expressed uh, our, my concerns, and it has to do with the, the confidentiality agreement. And if it's an arena, is it a new purpose and not a renovation? And, you know, uh, I, we w would all feel better if you didn't hide the ball and just came out and told us exactly what it was. And if it needs to go to a public vote, then, ta then take it to a public vote. Good. Being Good. open and transparent is kind of important. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Finally, Ryan Boyd. Good morning, uh, Ryan Boyd, downtown resident on lunch break and formerly raised in District 1 up in Deer Valley, so thank you for your time today. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of, uh, well actually myself only, so just myself representing here, and I just wanted to say that I support the withdrawal at this moment. While I understand that we definitely would not want to prematurely cut short this conversation, there's a lot of concerns that I have about the amount of time that we've had to see this, especially in a very context sensitive environment. Um, as you've heard today, as you'll hear when you're at any of these community meetings, there's a lot of ideas about what this area could be. There's a lot of ideas of what should be done, what should be competed, and what should not be competed. And that's what this conversation is about. From my understanding of what this policy is, it provides a lot of authority to the council in deciding whether or not that's going to be what's going to be done here how it's going to be competed, what's going to be competed. Staff, in my opinion, is essentially just vetting to make sure that we don't do anything too wrong in the sense of the law, but that will all value-wise come down to you all. And so I urge you to take strong stances to support these conversations because, to be honest, most of us didn't have an idea of what was being competed until last week, one week ago. Now, the other thing is, at that very meeting, it was uh, presented by staff that the developers, proposers, anyone could come out and request community input before the proposal was submitted. It was also suggested that they could do it before it was advertised. Neither of that has happened. Maybe that was a miscommunication, but it's also seen that we saw part of what's going on as of this Monday. Not a lot of time for us to have those in-depth conversations about what could happen here and provide that feedback. So I definitely would support that we need to have those conversations and we need to continue going forward. I'm not personally opposed to potentially competing this in the future. It's just the way that this has happened right now is a little bit too quick and a little bit too fast on this first one that was mainly pushed as something that could work citywide for faster needs when you had smaller parcels. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. That is the last card. We do have a motion and a second to withdraw. I, what I am hearing from from the motion makers that uh, this it, it's not a it's not a permanent uh, request to see this see this go away it certainly isn't for me I'll be working with city staff uh, I'm sure not the only one working with city staff closely to continue this momentum there's a reason we created this policy and and uh, there's an opportunity to move downtown uh, forward but this policy is good for our city it, it, it's going to help us move at the speed of the private sector uh, a little more to the speed of the private sector allowing for unsolicited rfp opportunities and so it's a it's a good policy i'm glad we have it uh i wish we would have i wish the city would have been ready to uh to put this out there because again the proposer i believe is is playing within the boundaries you know, th this this is uh, come out. There's an opportunity. Someone is bidding on it, uh, t doing it legally, and now the city is in a position where we're saying, oh, "Wait, time out. Uh, we're going a little too fast." Well, that's 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 how the private sector works, and so we have to be uh, ready for that. What I will what I'll say is, if if I don't see any movement. Um, I personally, as the chair of the subcommittee, would uh, would ask to see this come back uh, as an agenda item as well. And uh, I would I would hope that uh, our local partners are communicating. Uh, this is an opportunity, as I said, to to lead with with uh, 
with the arts. I mean, it's Phoenix. Phoenix is the, the fifth largest city in the country, more landmass than Los Angeles, and we're still younger than most major cities in America. So as we continue to grow, we should be leading with arts and culture. And here's an opportunity, a great opportunity for us to do that. And, and we cannot miss that mark. And so uh, I don't want to see this plan shelved to collect dust. I'm hoping that this the momentum continues. Uh, and so I'll be, I'll be communicating that with city staff uh, as well. So we do have a motion and a second. We have no further cards. Do you have another comment? Another Councilman? comment, yes. Matter of fact, this is actually in my district. So if it was an abandoned building or a building that we weren't maximizing, the South Convention Center, I think we wouldn't have a problem with it. But it's actually a facility that we're, we're using, that we're generating $2 million from, and, and that's why we're hesitant on it. I, I don't want any developers or any um, planners to think that we're going back on what we want the city of Phoenix to have in downtown Phoenix. It's just that we want to make sure that we do the right thing. If you're looking at properties that we own, if you're looking at um, streets that we can activate, I think that's, that's an easy ask. But if you're going to ask for a convention center or city hall or one of our buildings that we're utilizing, then we really need to do some research and, and figure out if that's the right move for our taxpayers and for the city of Phoenix. So I think that the biggest hiccup out of this whole thing is the South Convention Center portion of it. And um, seeing that how, I'm not sure how it would affect our convention business in the future. Mm -hmm. So that's where my hesitance on. I would be open to any other um, plans or, or proposals that are out there that won't touch existing um, facilities that have functions to it at the moment. And that's, that's where I'm coming from. Okay. One chairman, to your comment, just uh, the council, when we were briefing them, asked some very thoughtful and good questions that we weren't prepared to be able to answer. So we uh, are committed that we'll work diligently to work with the council members to get those questions answered um, in a timely fashion. But they were very good questions that we just weren't, unfortunately, prepared to answer when they were asked. So we'll work diligently to get those done and, and um, working with the council members. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mackey. Okay, we have a motion and a second. No more cards. Any, any further discussion? We'll go to a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, I think we're going to lose a quorum here, correct? So, do we need a. So, the last two items are not for action. The, item 11 is a standing item. Just lost the quorum with Councilman Alkowski leaving, so this uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you.